all of us, no matter what we might be going through, the grace of God is sufficient uh, for all of us. And so uh, we're, we're thankful to the Lord for, uh, for that, for getting us there, getting us back and showing his power while we were there. So Brother okay, Fred. Thank you. Okay, the title of the message tonight is Dreams, Visions, and Aspirations. Now, in the general sense, I can just talk about dreams. I can talk about uh, the kinds of dreams we have, which may come through a vision or may come through a dream or it may just have something in your heart. And I call those aspirations that maybe God has put something there or maybe you've uh, thought about something that you want to do, you want to accomplish in your lifetime. Uh, dreams are very important. And if we stop dreaming, uh, then it's then that's when we begin to perish and die. Uh, a person, if you have something inside of you uh, for uh, a dream that you want to fulfill, then you're not perishing. You you've got something to look forward to, and we're going to talk about uh, the fact that the things that God gives us in dreams and visions and writing on the table of our heart that those. Uh, can only be accomplished through his supernatural power and him empowering us to fulfill those dreams. So uh, we can't do it. When he gives you a dream, it's bigger than you are. Mm -hmm. It's bigger than you can accomplish on your own. And, and he is giving all of us uh, dreams and visions for, uh, for the future. And he's, uh, things are just bubbling up inside of all of you. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. We would just uh, quit and uh, sit down under a tree and uh, wait mm -hmm. uh, till our time is up. But we have dreams. We want to do uh, what God has for us. And, and so I, I love this concept of dreams, visions, and aspirations. And they, they come from God. God speaks to his people. He speaks to them in dreams, and he speaks to them in visions, and also he just it gives you a knowing that, that there's something more out there and we want to go up higher to, to a more intimate place with God and fulfill things. And uh, we're not on a, uh, we're not an island. We're not an island unto ourselves, but we touch lives and we want to talk about all of those things. And so, first of all, I want to start with uh, uh, numbers and, and we'll see here in, in uh, numbers 12 that, God speaks in visions and dreams, and then we'll talk about the difference between visions and dreams. Numbers 12, verse 6, he said, Now hear my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto that person in a vision. I will speak with them in a dream. Okay, so this has been from the Old Testament. It's all the way along through the through the Bible that God is speaking to his people. And uh, then we see in Acts, uh, he opens it up and it's not just for prophets anymore, it's for all, all of us. us. Okay, so let's look at Acts chapter 2, verse 17. And it shall be in the last days, God says, that I will pour out of my spirit on all of mankind. And your sons and your daughters will prophesy, and your young men will see visions. And your old men will have dreams. Okay. So you're going to have visions and dreams. And that, that's when the spirit is poured out. And that's what, that is the era that we are living in. The spirit is being poured out and he is giving dreams and visions to people. Just like you and me, we all have had dreams. We've all had visions and uh, we're, we need to catch hold of those things because they give us a direction for our mm -hmm. lives. Mm -hmm. They are a picture of our purpose. When God gives you a dream or a vision or, or put something in your heart, he's showing you a picture of what your purpose on the earth is. And, and otherwise, how would we know what our purpose is? It's only by the spirit of God. And so mm -hmm. we see here in Acts, Acts chapter two, that it was from from God and from his spirit. And that's the realm that we live in. He is speaking uh, to all of us and, and we have these. And I have one other verse here. In Genesis 40, verse eight, 
God is the only one who can explain the meaning of dreams. Oh, hallelujah. If God gives you a dream or you have just a general aspiration of something you want to do, something in your heart you want to do, it's God that gives you the interpretation, the meaning of that. So if it's God given, then it's going to take his spirit yes, to, to help you it, understand it, to interpret it so you know what to do. Otherwise, uh, see, people without the spirit of God, God could speak to them, but they wouldn't know what it meant because it takes the spirit of God to interpret it. Now, uh, Joseph said that to two dreamers. The, the two men came mm -hmm. to him and, and they had had dreams and, and uh, they were so frustrated because they had dreams and they didn't know what to do with them. And he said, well, it's God. God uh, oh, gives us, you this dream. gives you the interpretation of it. He'll tell you what the meaning is. And so we need to recognize that. And uh, one of the things I do is I have a uh, paper and pen uh, by my bed or somewhere easily accessible in the night. And if I get a dream, I, I begin to put some things down because if I don't, I'll lose it. It, it goes away because yeah. it's, it's like a vapor. And so God gives you an idea, but, but you need to make a note of it and then meditate on it and seek the Lord because the Lord knows the interpretation. Now, I also want to say this, that we've dealt with people who are harassed yeah, by evil, evil spirits. spirits. So don't think every dream is from God. So how do you know whether a dream is from God or whether it's from an evil spirit? Well, it has a lot to do with how you feel about it. If it's uh, very dirty, very uh, fear, makes you feel oppressed, or, that's probably or not fearful. From, or fearful, that's not, not of God. Um, and, and so what Sherry and I do before we go to bed at night, we pray yeah, we do. and uh, plead the blood of Jesus over us, uh, which stops the enemy's attack in the nighttime because we're very def defenseless in the night. That's all of us. I mean, mm -hmm. you go to, to sleep, uh, we're in, on our own strength, very defenseless. Uh, we have no way to protect ourselves. And so we have mm -hmm. to depend on the Lord to protect mm -hmm. us. And so mm -hmm. pray before you go to bed, plead the blood of Jesus over yes. you and over the members of your household every night. Uh, don't let the devil uh, come in there and uh, create havoc in your life. Uh, at night by giving you dreams. And, and there are times I've had dreams and I knew they uh, were not of God. I was fearful. I was uh, mm. being chased by something or, or no matter what it was, it, I, I, I began to cry out Jesus. So even in my sleep, I know enough. Yeah, yeah. I know enough that if the devil was trying to attack me in my sleep, I would just start crying the name of Jesus, 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 Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the, generally that would cause me to wake up. But uh, in, in recent times, we've been praying, praying before we go to bed every night. Amen. And uh, also we travel a lot. We're in um, hotel rooms and you don't know what's been going what's been, on. What's been there before you. So you need to always plead the blood of Jesus over you because it's enough. Yes, one, amen. One amen. drop of blood is enough. And so put out the angels of God. We put the angels of God mm -hmm. uh, around us. And uh, th this is a, a, an interesting story. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, uh, God spoke to Sherry uh, and told her to put the warring angels around me. And uh, what happened, I was, I was walking on a mountain uh, trail and... Uh, I was attacked by the bees, but praise God, I had the angels of God to protect me. Hallelujah. I'm, Hallelujah. I'm thankful for that. So we need to, to know uh, that our God wants to protect us. And, but mm -hmm. we have to take an initiative here uh, and, and ask for his protection and ask for his guidance. Uh, and this is true in the night seasons and in the daytime as well. Okay. So, uh, we've talked about the source of them, of course, the being, um, being God. And so now let's just distinguish. There is a difference between visions and, vision dreams. and dreams. Visions are something you see in the daytime. They're like a movie. You're watching a movie, but you're just looking at a wall or some God is showing you something and that's a vision. 
And then when you're sleeping, uh, he may show you some things, and that would be in a dream. So there are differences between visions and dreams. And so I want to go over these two passages mm -hmm. in Genesis 15 that explains the difference between a vision and a dream. Now, the book of Genesis is the book of beginning. And so we see here a vision and then and we see a dream and there are meanings associated with that. It's for both of them are for Abram. But in the book of Genesis, when you see things, that becomes a precedent for other things. So this is not irrelevant uh, for us, but it's important that we need to know there are differences between visions and dreams. I'm going to explain them as we read these two uh, passages in Genesis 15. Genesis 15, verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram, or Abraham, in a vision, saying, Do not fear, Abram. I am a shield to you. Your reward shall be very great. Okay, so here he comes in a vision. Now, the vision, and again, this is a precedent. This is the way it's going to happen uh, in other times, in later times. The vision was to reveal God's nature. And so here he's our shield and our buckler and our and uh, uh, present help uh, in trouble. And, and so he begins to reveal his nature and he does that through visions. Mm -hmm. But now dreams are different. So let's look at this. Okay, Genesis 15, 12 through 17. Now when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. And behold, terror and great darkness also fell upon him. Then God said to Abram, Know for certain that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, where they will be enslaved and oppressed for 400 years. But I will also judge the nation whom they will serve, and afterward they will come out with many possessions or abundance. As for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You will be buried at a good old age. Then the fourth generation, in the fourth generation, they will return here for the wrongdoing of their Amorites is not yet complete. Okay, so what we see in these verses is there's a plan in the dream. In the dream. God reveals his plan. In the vision, he revealed his nature, how he uh, loves us and how he operates. But in the dream he reveals his plan and it was going to go over uh, hundreds of years he was revealing his plans over hundred years hundreds of years and this was in a dream that he gave abram abram's name of course was changed later to abraham but at this time he's still talking to abram and and so we see the difference between visions and dreams but what i what i want you to know is that there are differences uh, Visions are distinct. Uh, they are to reveal the nature of God. Dreams reveal his plans and purpose. And then you may just have uh, something in your heart, and that's uh, something that uh, you want to accomplish or God wants you, mm -hmm. wants you to accomplish. But, but in general, the, the message is just in all of these together, and I just call them dreams about uh, the future, something about the future that we're we're planning, we're envisioning uh, our, our future. And so we want to say that these are very important. Yes, uh, and if we're not dreaming about the future, and, and I'm not talking about a, a literal dream, but I'm, I'm talking about you have ideas and plans for the future, visions for the future. If we don't, then we're perishing. Let's look at Proverbs 29. Proverbs 29, 18. This is from the Amplified Bible. Where there is no vision, no redemptive revelation of God, the people will perish. Oh, without without some kind of a vision, without mm -hmm. some kind of a dream for the future, then people are perishing. That's when they begin to die, when they have nothing in their heart to fulfill, no, no desires to do you anything know, else. You know, I've seen this over and over with, uh, with older individuals, of course, we're older as, as well, uh, but even older than we are. Uh, my, my dad, for example, is uh, in January, he'll be 98 years old. And he still gets up in the morning with, with purpose. He still gets up in the morning 
and goes out and he feeds his birds on the, on the, where he is and and he talks with the other people that are in his little in his little house that he's in and uh and so this is this is something that has given me great joy uh to see that he is still desiring to live and he has a purpose when he gets up in the morning and that will keep him going and that will keep us going every one of us uh that uh and this this I want you to stay with me because at the end of this session, I'm going to be releasing by the Spirit of God your dreams and your visions and your aspirations uh, for the days that are coming ahead of us. And so I want you to stay with me. Okay. And the, the next verse, I I liked it because it, it shows that we can pray to have these dreams, that for God to give us mm -hmm. these dreams. So read this here. Please. Psalms 20. Verse four, may he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill your whole plan. Okay. Ooh, hallelujah. So, so how are our dreams going to be fulfilled? Well, it's God. And if they're Amen. given to you supernaturally, it's going to take supernatural empowerment, empowerment. To, uh, to bring them to pass. But I want to say here in Ecclesiastes 5.3 that it's going to take some effort. So if you have a dream about mm -hmm. the future, uh, if you want a house on a hill or if you want uh, an education or you want this or that, it's, it's going to take some effort on your part. Right, so it doesn't right. just uh, drop on you out of the sky. Yeah. So read Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 3. For the dream comes through much effort. Okay. So it's going to take some effort. Yeah. But you cannot fulfill a God-given dream on your own. It takes supernatural power Amen. to do that. Amen. Now I want to talk about empowering and, and how do we get empowered from it? And, and I think this uh, first one, uh, Psalm 37, I'll read these uh, few verses here. It says, uh, verses three through five, trust in the Lord and do good. Live in the land and cultivate faithfulness. Okay. Wow. Who is faithful? Well, the Lord is the Lord faithful. is faithful. Oh, hallelujah. And so you, you dwell with him and in his presence, you trust him. See, this is about how to be empowered for your dreams Amen. to be fulfilled. Hallelujah. Uh, this is not uh, self-help. This is not about going out and uh, getting a few more books and learning about uh, what you can do in your natural ability or anything like that. It's mm -hmm, trusting mm -hmm. in the Lord. That's where it starts. And be in his presence, about his presence. And then he will, uh, he will begin to do things in your life. So we need to be sensitive to the Lord mm -hmm. and in his pre presence. Go ahead, go ahead and read a couple of more verses. Okay. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Okay, I want to talk about delight. We can't get caught up with what carnal people do. See, there are carnal people all around all of us. Carnal people are people who, they may be Christians, but they have not renewed their minds to the Word of God. Carnal people, people will do carnal, carnal things. things. Uh, and that's and that's just things that are ungodly and, and worldly. And, and if you think about that, then they probably do... Un, uh, mm -hmm. ungodly things to you. They talk about you. They lie. They cheat. Uh, that's carnal people. That's what they're going to do. And if we put our focus on what evil people do, it's going to suck out the spiritual life and we're not going to fulfill mm -hmm. our dreams. Mm -hmm. But then I like this last verse here. here. Yeah. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he will do it. In other words, he's going to empower you. Amen. It, it's not all about you. You, you need his power. He will empower you, mm. but we've got to be joyful about him and be sensitive to him and what he, and stay in his presence. And then he will give you the power Hallelujah. to fulfill your dreams. That's Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here. Proverbs 16, verse nine. We plan the way we want to live, but only God makes us able to live it. Oh, so. Hallelujah. Where do, where do, we get the empowerment to do it. Okay. So we can plan, but God gives us the power and yes, empowers the us yes. 
the ability hallelujah. to fulfill our dreams. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank okay. you, Jesus. All right. So well, and he wants us to dream bigger than what we have been dreaming. He wants a bigger vision for each one of you. Uh, oh, hallelujah. Lucy, he wants a bigger dream for you. Uh, Tommy and, and, and your wife, he wants bigger a bigger dream for both of you. Joy and, and George, he wants a bigger dream. Uh, Mary and Sophia and Wendy. Oh, hallelujah. He wants bigger dreams for Freddie and I, all of us. And that's one of the reasons that we're teaching on this tonight is that he has, the Lord has put it in our heart that we are to dream bigger. Dream bigger dreams. Right. Our God yes. is infinite. Amen. He's everywhere present. He he's he knows everything. So we need to have a bigger dream than we have now. Oh, well, maybe he's already put some dreams in you. Yes, but, amen. But we can dream more. And I like what John 15, 15, what Jesus said in John 15, 15. He said, we're no longer slaves. We're no longer servants. Okay, go ahead. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know what his master's business is. Instead, I call you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made it known unto you. Well, hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. So what I want you to see here is a slave or a servant, they can't think on their own. They can only do what they're told to do. Mm -hmm. But a friend, see, is free to oh, dream. Hallelujah. Dream big dreams. Thank you, Jesus. You, we serve a big God, so dream God-sized dreams. Amen. Dream Amen. big dreams. You're God's friend. Oh, hallelujah. That That's really exciting yeah. to me. Amen. We are God's friend. Yes. And where the spirit of the Lord is, oh, there is freedom. freedom. And you have freedom to dream. I'm encouraging Hallelujah. you to dream big dreams. Read this verse here. Second, Second Corinthians 3, 17. Now the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom or liberty. Okay. So if you're with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is in you and guiding you. You are free to dream. You're not a slave. You're not a servant. They can't mm -hmm. dream. They can only do what they're told. But a friend can oh, dream hallelujah. big dreams. Hallelujah. And then I want to talk about somebody who dreamed a big dream. And his name is David. And mm -hmm. uh, when Solomon uh, built this temple uh, for God, it, it was a big temple. And in today's uh, market, it would be billions upon billions of dollars to build mm -hmm. a temple that he uh, that he built. But let's look at what Solomon wrote about his father, David. First Kings 8, verses 16 and 17. Since the day that I brought my people Israel from Egypt, I did not choose a city out of all the tribes of Israel in which to build a house so that my name would be there. But I chose David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart of my father David to build a house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. Okay, so let me explain this. God had in his heart to find a man like David, a man whose heart was like God's heart. So that's what was in God's heart. Mm -hmm. But David had something in his heart. He had a, in his heart, he had a dream of a temple to worship God. Oh, hallelujah. But that wasn't God's dream. That was David's dream. David dreamed this incredible dream to build a temple for God where God could be worshiped. And what in today's market, again, would be billions upon billions of dollars. There's never been another building like that. There may have been taller buildings. There may have been wider buildings, but no building has ever compared with the temple that Solomon built, a place where God could be worshiped. But that was David's dream. It wasn't God's dream. God didn't even put it in his heart. That was what David dreamed. And you can dream hallelujah. big dreams. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Now, uh, then I, I want to conclude with uh, uh, another set of, of verses. And, and this is 
that we can impact other people by putting a seed of an idea into their lives. And I'm talking about mm, prophecy mm, here mm. because you can look into the lives of other people. This might be your children. It might be your spouse or your siblings. Uh, you can look into their heart. Now, it's easy for us to see the dirt that people, are, the evil, the darkness there. But I'm not talking about looking for dirt or darkness or evil. I'm talking about looking for the gold in the lives mm, of other people. Mm, mm. You can help plant seeds of ideas into other people mm. by prophesying to them, being so close and so sensitive to the Lord. And, and then when you come in contact with people, and then this may be your children, or, or it may be a neighbor, or it may be a co-worker, that, that you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You're listening to what the Holy Spirit is saying, and then you can drop an idea into them. You can prophesy to them uh, that will give them a dream. No, oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. You, hallelujah. Can, you can release a dream into other people's mm, I lives. Amen, amen. And, and you know, Moses said, I wish every one of God's people would prophesy. And Paul wrote, I wish every one of God's people would prophesy. Amen, so let's amen. look at these verses here. And that's the reason that we need to be prophesying. We need to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, listening to what the Spirit says, and then prophesying that into the lives of other people. Read In Numbers eleven twenty nine, But Moses answered, Are you jealous for me? I wish all of God's people could prophesy. Oh, he wanted everybody to prophesy. Mm -hmm. If you can prophesy into people's lives, you mm -hmm. prophesy the gold. You, you see the gold that Hallelujah. God has for them. Hallelujah. You see the future that God has for them. It's about the future, establishing the future. And, and things have to be released for the future. And, and that you can do that through prophecy. Now, what did Paul write? And then 1 Corinthians 14, 31. For you, you all, you all, <laughs> every one of you can prophesy one by one so that all may learn and that all may be encouraged. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody can prophesy. But don't look for the dirt or the evil in other people's lives. Look for the gold. Look for yes, the ideas mean, that yeah. God is giving about their future. Oh, this is what you can do. It may be, you know, sometimes uh, servers come up to us in a restaurant and, and we might prophesy to them because we see, well, maybe God has something better for them. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe they're a manager. Maybe they've got the potential to be a manager. Why not release that into them? Let them think about, oh, I, Oh, I, I'm, I could do this. I could be a manager or I could own my own business. You right, begin to, right, right. to talk to people that you come in contact with, begin to see the potential in them, prophesy, release that potential in them. One of the things that Sherry and I did uh, this year that I'm really excited about, and I, I mentioned this before, but we developed a family photo album. And uh, it, it has some pictures about Sherry and me but it also has photographs of our three children and each of their family. So uh, there are several pages of, of one of my children and their family, several pages of that, and then the next one of my children, several pages in the next. So that's their family. So photo albums. And photo albums are really uh, important, and you might not look at them all the time, but it's good to go back and look. But that's not all I did in the photo albums. Sherry and I prophesied mm -hmm. over our children and over our, our seven, seven grandchildren. grandchildren. So we wrote words of prophecy. Now, they may not remember those words today. They may not even uh, think much about them today. But they'll go back to those photo albums, family photo album. They'll look through there again in the years to come. And they'll and, see the and words. And they'll see the words. The words have already been released. It's in the atmosphere. We've spoken them out. So we have prophesied over our three children and over our seven grandchildren. And, and those prophecies have gone into the atmosphere and see God's enabling them. He's empowering our children and our grandchildren to be whom he has called them, them to be. To be. So, but we don't have to do that. I also use the example where just waiters come up and uh, wait on you in a restaurant. You can, 
you can just look at the potential and keep your ear uh, attentive mm, to, the, to Holy the Holy Spirit, Spirit and see what the Spirit would say. You want to give people encouragement, uh, help them uh, realize that there is more for them in the future than they have today. And that's the role that Christians can mm. do. And I encourage all of you to be encouraging to your coworkers, to your children, to, to the people you come in contact at the grocery store. You can give them encouragement. And I'm talking about from the Lord and that you mm. see the potential and, and uh, talk about it and highlight it in their lives. Mm. And maybe it's not something that they even see themselves, but maybe you see it as an outsider uh, you see things about them that they may not even think they have. And you, so you can begin to prophesy into that. And you don't have to stand up and say, oh, thus saith the Lord, you're, you're going to do such and that. Yeah, I mean, just speak in a conversation. But you'd be listening to the Holy Spirit, speaking to them and, and releasing potential into them. That's the thing that you have. You have that opportunity to impact other people's lives by sowing seeds of dreams. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, oh, hallelujah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Thank you for being here today. That's I'm going to turn it over good. to Sherry. You know, several times this uh, this past year, uh, we've had uh, this uh, prophesied over Brother Fred and I that we were to enlarge our tents and expand our territories and that we were to strengthen our our cords and our and Le lengthen the cords and strengthen, strengthen our stakes. Okay, lengthen our cords and strengthen our stakes, and and so we have we have been meditating on that and thinking on that, and and the Lord is bringing new opportunities to us and new doors are being opened to us, and and we give the Lord praise for that, uh, because we are believing, we are believing that. The Lord is increasing the territory, and I believe that some of you are going into some new territory. And the, and the Lord would say unto all of us, "Let the adventure begin." Ooh, hallelujah. hallelujah! Hallelujah! Let the adventure begin. Yes, Amen. And there's no reason to be fearful. There's no reason to be uh, concerned or worried about it. But the Lord will carry you through. Uh, for instance, I think about Wendy, you know, being there in, in China, you know, many opportunities are there uh, to, to bring the light, uh, to bring uh, encouragement, and to release potential in people's lives. So, Wendy, I just say unto you to be obedient uh, to the Spirit of God and be sensitive uh, to what he, he would say uh, unto you. You know, I think about Joy and George, uh, that they just got back from China, you know, and I think about um, all of us uh, that we have opportunities every day to be an encouragement uh, to other people. And, uh, and this is something that I pray that you will catch hold of with this message tonight, that this is a let the let the adventure begin uh, with the Lord. Ask Him uh, to give you opportunities uh, to spread the seed and and to spread encouragement, and also to prophesy uh, into other people's lives. And uh, and so I think people when you say prophesy, sometimes people back away and and they think about prophets and they think about seers and and but just speaking the word of God to someone by the spirit of God you've heard uh, the scripture you've heard what you're supposed to say and then you say it that's prophesying and so there's no reason to to be uh, fearful about it um, I do want to release uh, and then I'm going to turn it, I'm going to open up the floor uh, for anyone who would like to share with us uh, if God has given you a, a, a vision or a dream about your future. Uh, you know, we would love to, to hear about that. And so right now, in the name of Jesus and by the authority that the Lord has given me, I release 
your dreams and your visions to begin to manifest in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The manifestation of your dreams and visions. Amen. That's what I'm releasing into the atmosphere right now. I receive, I receive it myself. It. I, receive it. I receive it. So receive by the Spirit of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you. I'm going to just uh, turn it back uh, so we can see all of your faces. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so would someone like to share uh, with, with us uh, a, a dream or a vision uh, that you have uh, concerning your yourself and and what the what the lord is 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 saying to you do you have something you want to share with us um Terry, I said. okay uh, wendy yeah can you hear me clearly yes, yes. we can okay I, I just want to share the visions that i have had the same vision three times in my life. And, okay. And when I had it, I didn't know what it means. So, so I, I'm, I'm just let you know. So one was in high school, one in college. The third one was year, to, um, year 2000 when I went to the job interview in my company. Okay. Just just got into the hall. I, 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 I had a vision. All three okay. times, the same vision. It's oh, like in a huge hall. At that time, I didn't know Lord. I didn't, I wasn't real believer. Uh, even though I did go to church sometimes uh, before that, but I wasn't a real believer at that time. Okay. So, um, so it's like a huge hall. It's a hall, a, 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 a bunch of people, all female, all girls in white blouse, in white blouse, like um, mid-trainium, that's white. Long house, I guess. Say, standing here, there, like in a big party. I mean, I'm talking about the people just standing, like three people together, or you know, the chat. I, I was standing away and just looking at them, and I knew I was part of them. That was my group. Okay. And all three times the same vision. I don't know what it means, and and it's just like. So I always thought, you know, Chinese old story, basically, there's a, there's a kingdom, there's a kingdom that's all girls. We call the daughter, the country, or the kingdom of girls. So I thought, oh, maybe, you know, I, I, I came from that kind of country or kingdom or my previous life or something. So I told Joy about it. She thinks that's, that's a vision from God for me. So I mean, I've been thinking about it. I, I just wonder what it means. And I mean, I guess. I, I believe it's a, uh, it's a picture of you uh, uh, coming into the kingdom of God. And just because it was women that you saw in the, in the vision, uh, I believe that uh, the the church is the bride of Christ, and the white is the is the righteousness of the Lord. And I believe that that He is bringing you He He's bringing you into the body of Christ and into the kingdom, which is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And I believe that uh, you may even have this vision another time. Because he he wants it very clear to you uh, that you are part of what he's doing. You are part of that. You're part of the kingdom. You're part of his his body, and and that you are uh, you are a very important part. And and so in the white, uh, they were all wearing white. Were you also wearing white? Were you see that's the thing. I wasn't in the group. I was more like an observer. Okay. I, I knew All right. In my heart, I was part of them. That's my group. Okay. Yes. 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 And yes. in your heart, you knew yes. that you were part of this group. Yes. And that is the saints of God. Yes. That is okay. the saints of God. Amen. 
Thank you. That's a beautiful vision. Yes, yes. That's a beautiful vision. You have a yeah. place. You have a position. Yes. In God's kingdom and what he is doing in these days. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Wendy. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Someone else share a, a, a dream or a vision that God has given you? After I come back from China, I had a dream, but I... I I didn't understand. I, I was not quite clear what it was about, even I pray about that. The first part of the dream is that George and I were in a very old house. I said, oh, it's kind of almost century old. It's very old. The ceiling was low, but it was very clean. It's my auntie. My auntie and my uncle passed away. It was their house. It's, okay. The draft was very good. It, it was hot outside, so hot, but it was so cool there. And it was very clean. When I look out of the window, um, the the level of the street is even lower than this house, but the street was narrow, but very clean, very old. And there is a piano standing between the window and the door. And when I, the piano was covered with embroidery tablecloth, that's my hometown's specialty. You know, we have embroidery in different areas. Okay. It was beautifully embroidery sheets. When I removed that, um, the keyboard was narrow, small, it's a grand minute piano and when I removed it, I saw the keyboard much shorter you know not as many keys as a regular piano and there's a lady came in she was she was look very kind and she said it's my uncle's mother and I felt like that's strange my uncle passed away but his mother didn't look that old and she was very kind and looked so young and I complimented that and that's one part of the dream and then immediately Sarah and I were standing at the door of a big hall. The hall doesn't seem to be used for a long time or something. It's dusty. It's The light was not really bright. There is no light turning on. But there are window up there and the light came in and the light, the rays show some dust because it's... So I was thinking to myself, I even don't like this place, but I was thinking, Sarah, you as a photographer, you love this kind of, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't tell her, but we stood together and then we were at the door and then on the right side is kind of a table or a shelf with some par par um, parts of plants. And these plants, um, there are new leaves, you know, a lot of green is surprising. No one was there, but the leaves are green and, and new leaves. And I felt like, wow, no one took care of that. I tried to water that. But I noticed that because the mud, you know, there are water on covered on the surface of the, of the parts. So I removed them. And so the water can drain through. And then I woke up. So I don't understand, you know, I don't understand why I dream like that. Is there any possibility? Hey, well, well, one thing I, I see um, is that you're moving from, from, the, from old concepts uh, to the new concepts and even though in the new uh, concepts there are things that you need to uh, purify and clean up and and give life, and to. Give life to exactly uh, that the the Lord is calling you uh, to bring life wherever wherever you go and that even though the uh, the old was nice and clean um uh, and, and it was familiar to you. Uh, it was something that was comfortable to you, and and, and then it didn't and, have the potential right. of the new thing. Right, the new has has uh, has issues with it, but there is much more potential, potential there for for life. Yeah, uh, your dream was all about life. Thank you. Okay. Amen. Amen. So How can you remember that? Pardon. I mean, Joyce remember her name in such a detail. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true, Mary. That's very true. Yeah. I thought the same thing. Yes. Yeah. Very true. But because I learned from Dr. White that you have to document that very quickly. Yeah. Oh. And I, woke up, I know I had a dream and I woke up. I didn't remember, but but then I pray that, Lord, I want to remember this dream. Even mm -hmm. I don't understand it. And then I wrote it now. So oh, thank you. Oh, 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 I see. I see. Oh, that's excellent. <laughs> I, I know George has had uh, uh, quite a few. He's a dreamer. He's like he's like Dr. White. Uh, Dr. White, um, <laughs> Brother Fred, 
uh, dreams a lot. And, uh, and I'm, I'm more, I have more visions than I do, than I do dreams, but someone else share with us. This is excellent. I mean, I don't remember my dreams. Even I remember I forget it in several days. So, um, so my, I want to know more about vision. You know, my understanding about vision is like the purpose of something, like the goal. Yes, yes. Uh -huh, yes. Uh -huh. Like, like yes. we have church vision, school, or yes. company, they have their own vision. Right, right. But oh, here, yeah, that, that's, that's, right. <coughs> yeah. But, that, that's good, know. Mary. That's good. And uh, but, those, are, those are not necessarily God-inspired. But uh, God, if God gives you a vision where it's like watching a television for example sherry tell us about the vision you had with the seymour like uh, yeah tell us how that i was uh, uh well like mary said i i feel like the the vision was speaking to me uh about uh, something that the lord was was wanting me to know about this particular man uh and I was I was getting myself ready for for the day and in my bathroom mirror I saw this uh, uh black man and he was kneeling and I saw that he was kneeling before the Lord and he says to the Lord what is required of me and the Lord speaks back to him and says, one thing is required, and that is that you love. And I didn't know who I saw until uh, Brother Fred had a student from, from, was it? China. from China. And uh, she and I would get together and pray. She, uh, and I'm sure she still is, an evangelist. And she would come over to my house and we would pray together. Uh, usually once a week. And so the the Lord said, share your vision with her. And so I said, I saw this man and I told her all about my vision. And she began to shake all over. And then the uh, the light fixture in my in the our dining room began to shake. And uh, and I said, Well, who did I see? I don't know who I saw. And she said, you saw William Seymour, the the man who started the revival in California, the Azusa Street revival, and you saw him. And I said, well, how do you know that that's who I saw? And she said, well, in his book uh, that was written about him, he is kneeling before the Lord and he asked the Lord what is required of me. And the Lord says, one thing is required, and that is that you love. And so many times, like Mary said, the vision is showing us what is what the Lord wants uh, to come about in our lives. And I, I took that to, to mean that I was going to be part of revival in, in this uh, in God's kingdom and that I needed to to have more love uh, to do that. Okay, so, so so there are I use that as an example of a God given vision that she saw. She saw uh, looking at her mirror, but her mirror began, turned into like a TV monitor. Yeah, and she began to see all of that play out. So that was a God given vision. But there's also just the concept of vision, which is goals and maybe a committee comes together and writes down some things. Yeah, and that's they, what Mary was talking about. And, and they they could ask the Lord or they could do it without even asking the Lord or involving the Lord. Uh, but it's it's something about the future. And so if it's just a, a group of people as a committee who write, who write uh, a vision, let's say for a church congregation or a business, uh, then it depends on the nature of those people, whether or not that, is really of God or whether it's just the natural thing that they want to accomplish. Uh, but also God gives visions like Sherry just shared that vision. Uh, and, and those visions that he gives, uh, that's to reveal 
who he is, his nature. Right. Uh, but if uh, for a company to write a vision statement, uh, that's just the goals and uh, the way they operate, the way they want to operate now and into the future. Uh, so, mm -hmm. and, and so basically the topic that we're talking about today is, is a general concept of aspirations. But I did let you see from Genesis 15 that there are God-given visions and there are dreams, but the message tonight is just about aspirations, about the things you want to do in, in the, the future. future. So it's all about the future, right. planning for the future. And first you set the goals and then once you have a goal for the future, then you begin to develop a plan. And that's that step by step, how to get to the mm -hmm, goal mm -hmm. in the future. Amen. Okay. Thank you. That's uh, aspiration means a plan or? Yeah, it, it could, it can be a general uh, concepts. About yeah. What's the, in your heart? Yeah. What's but, in your heart? But it could also be. Uh, the plan is uh, normally the plan or the step by step uh, procedures of how do we fulfill the goal. Okay, uh, I'll look it up. I never heard about aspiration. <laughs> okay, well, that's a, it's a good word. Yeah, it's an, uh, an excellent word. Yeah, yeah, it's I think it's hope or plan. Oh, that's good. That's very good. That's yeah, it is hope. Hope is included in aspiration. Yes. That's excellent. All right. Does does someone else have have a dream or a vision? Oh, we can share a, a brief one. Um, All right. So uh, we uh, I, I saw this. I think this is a vision. Um, um, we were with um, two of our um, Kind of like the spiritual mentors uh so basically we saw this uh images when when we were praying with the these two mentors uh what what i saw was like we were uh kind of walking on the grassland uh these two uh mentors they are like married couple they were walking ahead of us uh they were holding hand and me and victoria were uh, at the back walking kind of beside uh, behind them and then we were also holding him. And then we were like joyfully kind of walking through the, the great grassland. And then uh, just after a while, we, we saw this like a cave. Uh, and then it's a little bit lower. Uh, so it's like not very large cave. And then basically uh, the, 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 the two mentors were, were saying, uh, so we can, only, we can only walk you up to here. And so they were like, now it's, it's your, it's your turn or it's your time. And then basically me and Victoria, we were like, you know how like the water slide, you have to <laughs> lower your body and then go into the water slide. And so we, so we went into the cave. Uh, it, it seems like we were in like a universe, um, mm. like, like a universe. Um, my first instinct was like, that's like a metaverse. <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah. And then, yeah, so we were in this, in this floating in this universe. And then I heard one word in this, in this vision is like coach, um, like coach, like being a coach. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. I didn't really connect the dot back then. Okay. Um, I'm still connecting the dot right now. Okay. Uh, okay. So that, that's kind of, that's, I, I guess that's what I want to share. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. Good. All right. Uh, well, as I see, um, the green grass uh, is um, represents uh, abundance. Uh, it also represents um, uh, something that was um, comfortable uh, for for you and Victoria uh, that you were following someone that you trusted and and the the mentors and. But as they brought you to the, the cave, uh, they, they said, this is as far as we can, can go or take you. And I believe that that is when you're to catch hold of the Lord, that you're to, uh, to, to let your faith arise as you, as you go into the, the next universe. Now, the next universe is actually 
the supernatural realm. It's, mm-hmm. it's actually going from the natural realm with the, the grasslands. Into the area and, where you're very comfortable. Right. Very familiar to right. you. You're going now into to an a, area. A supernatural that not, realm. That you're not that familiar. So you need another guide. You need the supernatural Na- yeah, guide. Right. And that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And the Holy Spirit is going to take you by the hand. And he's going to take you through that 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 realm. And uh, there's there's much more to learn. There's much more to to um, comprehend and understand. And but the Lord is is he delights when people are willing to go into that next universe. And so you said that you and Victoria both were in that universe. Mm -hmm. Did you go into the universe? Yeah, both of us. <laughs> yes, I, I think that good. that is that is excellent. Yeah, that is excellent, and and so the the Lord wants you to learn more. He wants you to uh, seek Him more, uh, to ask Him questions. You know, the Lord loves for us to ask Him questions, and uh, because He has all the answers. And so when you ask Him, you know, where am I? Show me where I am. Show me where you want Victoria and I to go. Uh, he will. He will do that. He will show you. And uh, and so, I pray over you right now that the Lord will increase uh, that um, desire in both of you to go even deeper into that into that universe. Uh, in Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> I also want to share something about my dream, but it's a really uh like an aspiration, I think. Cause All right. I, um, I spent a lot of time exploring what uh what God want me to do or what's my calling. Cause right. I spent a lot of time, almost twenty years, to learn something that I did didn't like. Like uh, my main ma- major is law, and but I didn't want to be a lawyer, and I hate right. those paperwork. <laughs> and, right. and then. <laughs> Then I uh, went to America. I th- oh, I cannot work because uh, I'm under F2. So I have a lot of uh, time to explore or to learn something online. And, and, and <clears throat> so I'm still, still exploring and still like um, soul searching uh, what's my passion or what's God's, uh, want, what will God uh, give me. Or, um, yeah, so kind of have some clue. Uh, maybe art, art or therapy, uh, or um, but uh, like uh, combine art and the psychology. It's like something, <laughs> or um, I don't know. It's a back painting or express expressive art. So um, basically, you use some different or creative ways to connect people to um. Um, reveal God's love to people or to know uh, ourselves more, know God's more. Yeah, so... Well, that's uh, that's beautiful. Yeah. So basically, uh, I'm just <laughs> here. Yeah, just, uh, uh, just know this so far. <laughs> yeah. Amen. I see, I see uh, a teacher in you. I see that you're, you're very uh, methodical. You're very structured. And uh, and I see that uh, that you are able to bring um, to people an understanding, and that's what teachers do. They bring an understanding, and like you said, you want them to know more about God's love, more about uh, Him, more about what they're supposed to be doing, and and so I just. Uh, I just put that out there for you to, to pray about as far as um, uh, we need uh, wise teachers. Uh, we need teachers that are filled with the Lord. And and so I just, uh, I'll leave that with you to, to pray about, okay? Okay. Amen. Amen. Okay. Hallelujah. Well, you know, this has been a wonderful session tonight. <laughs> Uh, we uh, plan to be back with you next Tuesday night. And uh, and so let the adventure begin with the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We're going to we're going to do the same thing. Amen. Let the adventure begin. Amen. Hallelujah.
we we love each one of you and 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 may the blessings of the lord uh come upon you uh in jesus name amen amen, amen. amen. Thank hallelujah thank you hallelujah. thank you lord thank you so much love you. We love you. Bye-bye. Bye. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.